John here, and today we're going to test the accuracy of these 10 torque wrenches with the CDI torque wrench tester, which has an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5%. All of these torque wrenches here in front of me, I did actually purchase. None of them were given to me, and they are all brand new. Now to do this, we're first going to test each of these torque wrenches on the tester. Then I'm going to cycle each one of them a thousand times, and then we're going to go back to the tester and run it again and see what we get. So if we talk about specs just for a little bit, these are half inch up to 150 foot pounds. Now these torque wrenches are budget torque wrenches with most of them coming in under $50 with only one exception. So the cheapest torque wrench is the Hyper Tough from Walmart, 2488. Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight, 2499. EP Auto is coming from Amazon, 3147. Then the Amazon Basic, at 38.54, that one does come with a case. I just put it out there to show you guys what it looked like. So we have the Capri from Amazon for 39.99. Next up is the Performance Tool coming from either Advanced Auto Parts or Northern Tool, 39.99. Tecton here for $42 on Amazon. Sun X for 47.99 on Amazon as well. Duralast, of course, sold at AutoZone for. $47.99. Last but not least, we have the Lexavon there, also purchased on Amazon with an MSRP of $54.97. So only two of these torque wrenches actually didn't come with a case, and that is the Performance Tool and then the Hyper Tough. Uh, the Duralast has kind of an open style case. Of course, you would remove this typically. Um, this would be something that would stay off here, so it does have an open case with the rest of the torque wrenches actually coming with a nice blow molded case. So being that these are budget torque wrenches, none of them are made in the USA, but what I can show you guys here is this group is made in China, and then this group is made in Taiwan. Now accuracy wise, we're looking at the majority of them of plus or minus 4%, with the Sun X actually being rated as plus or minus 3%. That being said, Let's go straight into the testing, see what we get right off the bat, and then we'll cycle them for a thousand. All right, so first up we got the cheapest, which is the Hyper Tough. Wow, so there you have it on that one. EP Auto. The Amazon Basic. Let's try it again. Okay, we'll take that one. <laughs> Let's go up to 90. See if she gets any better. So next we have the performance tool. Really? Not good, not good at all. So, Capri at 30. It's consistent, but it's consistently off. So now we got the Tecton. So next we got the Sun X. 
Duralast. The Lexivon. All right, so now the fun part. I'm gonna get the DB of the click so we can see which one has the loudest audible click sound. And then I'm gonna cycle each of them a thousand times. Now these will all be set at 75. All right, so that was the uh, Hyper Tough. Now we have the Pittsburgh EP Auto, which is gonna be the hardest one to use because of the handle being the shortest here. Amazon Basic. Performance Tool. The Capri. Detected. Uh, Sunex, Duralast, we got the Lexavon here, and then after this they're going to sit overnight. So they're each cycled a thousand times, now we're going to go ahead run them through the tester again. First up of course is the Hyper Tough, so 30 foot pounds. Now we have the Pittsburgh EP Auto. Amazon Basic. Performance Tool. Pre. Then we have the Tecton. So the Sun X. Duralast. The Lexavon.
So you can see we have uh, test at 30 for each of the torque wrenches. Then we have deviation between the tests. So basically the lowest test number compared to the highest. And then we have deviation between setting. So of course it's set at 30. That's how far off of 30 um, the torque wrench was. And then we also factored in a plus or minus 0.5% correction factor for the accuracy of the torque wrench tester. So at the bottom, you can see down there we have pass fail. Next, you can see the audit after. Uh, only two of them have passed and the rest have actually failed here. Performance tool actually passed this time around, but of course it failed on the first audit. And then we have the Pittsburgh, which passed on the first one and also surprisingly passed on this one as well. You know, model, torque range, accuracy they claim, purchase location of where I got it, where it's made, and of course, MSRP. So another thing worth mentioning here is which ones did actually come with a calibration certificate. So I did group them up here. And on this side, we have the ones that did not, which is the HyperTough Performance Tool, the EP Auto here, and of course, the Amazon Basic. So from what I've tested here, they're all 24 tooth. Uh, the only real difference is in the head profile of the Duralast. So here's the Duralast Capri here. You can see it's definitely a lot bigger on the Capri versus the Duralast. This size head is pretty much the same across the board um, on the rest of the torque wrenches. Again, this is the oddball, which is a little bit narrower here, which might help you in tighter situations. You know, the overall lengths are pretty much the same. You know, they're about half an inch give or take here and there. So the biggest difference is with the EP Auto here, you know, being the shortest. Also, you may be considering, well, how easy are they to read? What I will say is the Pittsburgh, the Sun X, the Amazon Basic, again, the Performance Tool and the HyperTough, it's just engraved in on the handle and chromed over. So it's a little bit tricky to read. Now, next up, you know, you'd be looking at ones that are printed on. Of course, here we have the Duralast again. I would say it's a little bit easier than the regular old Chrome ones there. The EP Auto there, kind of the same deal, printed over uh, the Capri, which the satin finish kind of makes it a lot easier to see there. And that's the same thing when we look at the Tecton, same kind of deal there. But the one that definitely stands out, I wish it did better in the test results, it came kind of close to passing, is this Lexavon. Because, as you can see here, guys, you can probably clearly almost read it from the camera there. You know, you have a black finish, and then you have the numbering here in yellow. And it is really easy to read. So, as you guys looked at the data there, you can definitely see we had some fail at the start audit, and then after a thousand cycles, we had a little bit different results with some actually passing then, and then of course some actually failing. Now, if you combine those two, you take the audit from the first and the audit from after a thousand cycles, you're left with one, the Pittsburgh, which totally shocked me. Um, being that it is almost the cheapest one you can buy, barely coming in cheaper is the Hyper Tough, which, in all honesty, didn't do that bad either. Um, again, I ran the test with my own test stand. I purchased all these, nobody sent these to me. So it's unbiased data. Yes, there may be some human error. Yes, maybe some of these got damaged in shipping. I don't know. I just did this from what somebody would purchase online. So you might end up with different results, but looking at my results, John's pick is gonna be the Pittsburgh, which again, is quite shocking but hey that's what it is so hopefully you guys found this video useful please stay tuned for more thanks for watching